Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and wow, this is the first video that I'm filming since the big news is out. So I just announced my pregnancy on my Instagram. So that's really big news. If you didn't see it, I will have the post or the photos on the screen so that you can see that really quick. But I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who has been so supportive. It has been a long, 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 five-ish months being pregnant and not being able to share with you guys. I wanted to keep it private for as long as I could, um, but then I was just starting to show a lot and it's getting a lot harder to hide it, especially as the temps warm up and all of that, so I figured it was time to let the cat out of the bag. So anyway, if you wanna hear more about that whole journey, I'm gonna be making some content regarding pregnancy on my vlog channel, so make sure that you subscribe over there to see more information on that. I'm gonna be doing a Q&A over there as well. I'm gonna be filming that right after this video, so hopefully it'll be up in the next couple of days. So just stay tuned for that. But as far as the direction of this video, we're going to be talking about pottery because I took a pottery class and I wanted to show you my finished pieces, but I also wanted to show you some pieces from my collection that that other people made who are much more skilled than me <laughs> and just talk a little bit about my decision making process with choosing a pot for my plants. Okay the first pot we're going to talk about is of course the terracotta pot. We have to start at the most basic level. So this terracotta pot is a little bit special though because it has a shallower pot shape. So a lot of the time you'll see terracotta pots that are a little bit longer and that is what I gravitated towards in the beginning because I didn't know that something like this existed. Since I moved out here, I don't know if the you know, the buyers are different at Lowe's and Home Depot or whatever, but these this shape of terracotta, the shorter terracotta is what I see oftentimes at my plant nurseries and big box stores, whatever. And what I really like about this size, specifically for things like cactus, cacti don't typically have super deep root systems. Now, will this plant fill up this pot eventually? Absolutely, but they tend to be a little bit more of a shallow rooter. So I find that when I have those really long pots, it can be a little bit harder on the plant because it's holding moisture for a little bit longer than the plant would like, and you can experience things like rot. And the same thing can happen with house plants. A lot of the time I've noticed that when I'm repotting plants out of the more cone shaped, longer terracotta, um, I did experience a lot of root rot and not to say that it was just because of the pot, I definitely wasn't using the right soil either at that point. I just find that having this more shallow pot allows the roots to be a little bit wider and less long and that has really worked out for my plants. So just a little tip for you, I've had a lot of feedback that other people have found these pots and they've really liked them too. So just for my personal collection, making this small change was amazing and it's something that I did slowly. It's not something that I like went out and bought um, a million of them all at once, but if I knew that I was gonna be repotting some plants, um, I'd have a few of them on hand at a time so that I could transfer them in. And most of the plants on my wall are actually in those more shallow terracotta pots. Now terracotta is known for being probably the most affordable pot option aside from plastic probably. And what I really like about terracotta is how it ages. So this is actually a pot that I got from an estate sale. And this one doesn't have like a lot of patina on it, but patina is basically this white stuff right here. It's totally naturally occurring and I think that it's super beautiful and adds a lot of detail to a pot. Some people don't like it, but I definitely do. And anytime that I can get a used terracotta pot, I always do because I really like this style. Like I, I just really like the way that this one is made um, as compared to, you know, a more recently manufactured version. This is just a little bit more interesting and I really like it. Now the next category is one that I really didn't think that I would get all that into a couple years ago, but that is glazed pottery. So this is a piece that I purchased from a maker. So a lot of my pottery is also now made by people who are ceramicists or potters and they have made it, you know, their job or their side hustle or whatever to make beautiful pottery. And this is one of my favorite artists, um, Bud and Bowl, and she's actually coming back to do some restocks on Etsy and some local markets and stuff. So if you follow her on Instagram, she'll probably be updating over there. But I was so excited when she announced that she was coming back because this is probably one of the top three favorite pots in my collection. So as you can see, it's a clay pot that was glazed and in the glazing process, she put like wax or something on on it to create this design and I just absolutely love it. It came with a matching saucer with, I just noticed it has the design on the bottom. <laughs> That's really cool. I just, I really, really love this pot and it's such a statement. I, I have um, 
this plant in it. My, I don't remember the name, I'll have it on the screen. <laughs> it's a little bit of a wild name. But anyway, yeah, this pot has been so fun. And buying pottery like this with this like white and brown or like clay terracotta vibe has been a really big thing for me. I have a lot of pottery that is in this color scheme. And while I don't think that you need to have a specific and strict color scheme for your houseplant pots, I think that it helps, especially when you have a large collection. So on my wall, I have only terracotta. Now there are different shapes and colors of terracotta, but they are all definitely terracotta. And I just find that that makes it look so much more cohesive and definitely not as messy as it could look. So having pots that just fit a vibe that you're going for, like choosing an aesthetic <laughs> and then going with pots that fit into that aesthetic, at least for certain pockets of your home. So for the plant room, it's very, very boho in here, but in other parts of my house, I could probably go for like a more modern or even a more mid-century look and it would fit in perfectly fine. But definitely in here, I have the boho vibes. I am going to be coming out with a video going over a deep dive of a few different houseplant aesthetics, starting with boho because I feel like I have the most to say from personal experience on that one. So that will be coming out pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so this pot is a another fully glazed pot. And this one has a little catch tray on the bottom, which I have really, really enjoyed pots that have that. I find that with watering, it just goes a lot faster because I can put them back a lot faster. I know that that might not be a big deal for everybody, but I like that it has the saucer included. I don't have to go find a saucer. So in turn, it takes up less space. This has been amazing. And there's been a few pottery artists that I have pottery that have this. This one is, um, let's see, Bruning Pottery. They're based out of Washington. And I actually bought this from a local nursery here. One of my local nurseries uh, carries a lot of their pottery, but there's definitely a lot of other artists that do it. So when you're out looking for a pot and that sounded like a nice thing, definitely look for a pot that includes a drainage tray. And again, as I said, this one is fully glazed, which is something that I used to really avoid a couple years ago. And the reason was I was so paranoid about root rot. And I felt that if it was in a completely glazed pot, it wouldn't be able to breathe as well because with terracotta, we know that it wicks away the extra moisture, which is how we get that patina that I was showing you. But yeah, I was just really paranoid that it would cause rot or something. But what I found is my plants that are in a glazed ceramic need a a lot less for me. They dry out a lot slower. So it's nice to have a good mix of both because I do genuinely really like the look of terracotta, but the convenience of a ceramic pot, I mean, honestly, you just can't beat it. I have to water these plants so much less often than my terracotta pots. So yeah, they're very beautiful. And of course, since it's made by like a pottery artist, you can have so many different designs and fun um, shapes and all of that. This one again is a really shallow pot, which I have super enjoyed especially for anthurium. Look at that new leaf. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, the last type of pot that I wanted to shout out today is this Talvira pot. So Talvira pottery is Mexican pottery, and I get a lot of questions about these pots when I show them. So what I really love about this type of Talvira pottery is that it is neutral, so it matches my aesthetic perfectly while also paying homage to my hometown, you know, my heritage, all of these things. I just think it's really wonderful. So typically Talavera pottery is extremely colorful and you can get it in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. I really love that about Talavera that they have like big bell shaped pots. They have little ones. Um, there's been so many that I've seen and come across living in the Southwest and visiting Mexico so often that this is definitely my favorite. And I actually just realized that this plant is outgrowing it. This is a philodendron Billy and I have a root coming out the bottom. <laughs> anyway, I just noticed that today when I pulled it out, I haven't looked at this plant too often because again, this pot is glazed. So I get the benefits of terracotta. It's glazed only on the inside and it'll depend on each individual um, Talvera pot. Like they're not all going to be entirely glazed, but this design is glaze work. So um, I think it's called glaze work. I'm sorry if that's not what it's called. So there is like a certain degree of glaze going on, but you can still feel like there's definitely some unglazed stuff going on, but the inside has a clear glaze on it. Um, and that just helps 
hold moisture for a little bit longer. So again, I'm getting the idea of terracotta while getting the benefits of a glazed pot. <laughs> okay, so it's now time to show you my pottery pieces, which I am honestly super proud of. I took a pottery class for six weeks starting in January. I thought it would be a fun way to sort of beat the winter blues and um, <laughs> I happened to be pregnant while I was doing it kind of like in the depths of morning sickness and all of that fun stuff So it was a little bit of a challenge for me to get to each class and I kind of wanted to quit halfway through But I still went and I'm really proud that I did and it gave me something to do Honestly at the very least it gave me something to do. So I'm gonna show you all the pieces We're gonna start with the bad and then go up to like the good so first piece is this tiny little pot this is just like a little catch pot. The glazing on it is really leaving much to be desired. Like a bunch of people in the studio said that this glaze was kind of weird and it made a strange color. And this glaze is definitely different than all of the other pieces that I made. But yeah, it's just like a little ring tray. I don't really know what I'm gonna use it for. Probably, I don't know, put it on my nightstand and put my rings in it, which I forgot to put back on after I put on lotion, but yeah, this, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm happy with it. The next one that's a little bit wonky is this was supposed to be like a cactus pot, but it's only like an inch and a half tall, which I don't think will be tall enough for like any cacti. Maybe if I had something that was like super, super shallow. So if you have a recommendation for a plant that could live in like an extremely shallow pot, let me know because again, it, I, I mean, it's this side's a little bit taller than this side. <laughs> Um, but if you have any recommendations for a plant that could go in here, let me know. But I did like a dual glazing situation. I thought that it would drip a lot more because there was another woman who said that when she did that, what I did, that it dripped and it looked really cool. But even if it didn't drip, I thought it was cool. So I have a little hole <laughs> and it's just a little tray. I feel like this could have been cool as like a dog dish or something if I didn't put a hole in the bottom but you know, live and learn. Okay, my next kind of wonky one is again, a tiny little pot. This is definitely too small for a plant and my drainage hole is not in the center. Centering this pot, this, this was the first pot that I actually trimmed and learning how to center it for the trimming process was super annoying and I did it wrong. So clearly you can see the hole is not in the middle. Um, but anyway, it, it I just glazed it a plain white and I really love the way that the white glaze turned out. I think that white glazed pots is just, they're just so pretty. And I felt kind of basic using the white glaze so often but it's just what I like. And I think if I ever did a pottery class in the future, I would do it again <laughs> because it just looks so nice. And again, I don't think that there's a plant that could fit into this because this one is also like an inch tall. But if you have any ideas, it's probably like three inches wide by one inch tall. Let me know if you have any ideas. Now this is where my skills got a little bit better. And I so wish that I glazed this in the white, but the green is still very, very beautiful. It's a nice deep green color. So this one was in our bowls class and basically it's just a catch bowl. I mean, I can't plant anything in it and I don't really know, like maybe I could use it for putting nuts in on the table. I don't, I don't really know. I'll find some use for it because this is actually really nice. It's very even and the roundness is like correct. You know what I mean? Like once I figured out how to like round out things, I feel like I was so much better at that. So if I ever do do a pottery class again, I would want to figure out how to do this, but make it a little bit taller to do like a rounder pot. Okay, and my last pot, which is honestly like my crowning glory, <laughs> this pot, this is like a three inch pot. It's maybe like, I don't know, or maybe it's like a four inch pot and it's like three inches tall. So this is like a standard size small pot that I could buy from somebody else. And I decided to do polka dots for the glaze. I knew that I wanted to do that two-tone thing because as I shared with the button bowl pots, I was really inspired by that. So I really, really wanted to try my own version of it. And so that's how I ended up with this. Basically, I just put wax polka dots all over and then I dipped it into the glaze and this is how it turned out. So underneath here, these polka dots are unglazed and then through the center it's glazed. And then at the bottom, 
it is not glazed. And I did get a little crack because it's a little thin on the bottom, which I was so crushed about because this is the one that I was like, this is the only thing that I made that truly looks like a, somebody else made it. <laughs> but I made it a little bit thin on the bottom, so I don't know how it'll go long term. Hopefully it won't crack anymore and it'll be fine. When I tap it, it sounds kind of thin, but it made it through, so hopefully it'll be okay. But anyway. Yeah, those are my pots from my six week pottery class. I hope that this was helpful for you in choosing your pottery and maybe even inspiring you to take a pottery class this year. It was something that I always wanted to do and I felt like it was the time to try it. I mean, why not? It's the, the winter blues and all of that. So anyway, friends, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing a few of my pottery bits and then of course the ones that I made. Uh, thank you again for all of the support on my channel, um, especially with the big announcement. It just means so much to me that so many of you are just as excited as we are. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.